Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today marks the first sermon of our new series on discipleship. And as we get started, I want to let you know a little bit of where this came from. This whole uh, concept of going through the Great Commission and then Matthew really mirrors an experience that I had just a few months ago. And I've told some of you about this, but I, I want to mention this because this was really a life-changing experience uh, that I had. I had been spending a lot of time really thinking and pondering, praying about discipleship, what it meant to truly follow Jesus. And uh, I had a little time on my hands, and so I thought, I'm going to spend a whole afternoon, I'm going to, I'm going to really look at what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. And I knew that there were some, some churches out there that were doing some great work in teaching their people how to follow Jesus. So I was really curious about that, and so I was watching some videos from those, their, those pastors, and I was really kind of inspired by it. And then I got some sage advice, and the advice was basically this. Stop looking at the works of men and start looking at the Word of God. Humbled. <laughs> I followed the sage advice. And I thought, okay, fine. Well, what's, what's the first verse that comes to my mind when I think of being a disciple of Jesus? The Great Commission. Okay, let's go to Matthew 20. Let's take a look at it. And I don't know, I don't know. I, I think it was the Holy Spirit just in the moment opening my eyes. Uh, I saw something there that I'd never seen before. And... Uh, and it touched my heart in a way that it never touched my heart before. And um, after, after reading it and, and really, really letting it sink in, I was driven back into the book of Matthew with, with a fervor. I was searching. I was, I was looking at, at, at these words of Jesus. And, and it was as if I was seeing them brand for the very first time. This, this experience has quite literally changed my life. I don't, I don't think the same way anymore. I don't, I don't function the same way anymore. And, and because of that, I felt like this was something that was important for us to do. That we would spend some time in the Great Commission and then go right back into Matthew and, and spend this time then listening to Jesus with brand new ears and a brand new heart. So we begin with the Great Commission. And it's an interesting thing to do because... We're, at, we're beginning with the end, right? We're, these are the last words in Matthew that Jesus speaks to his disciples. All of these things have already happened in Matthew at this point. Uh, Jesus has, has been born. He is, uh, he is in the world. He is, he is teaching his disciples. He is, he is healing the sick and raising the dead. Um, he has died for the sins of the entire world, risen again, and has spent 40 days now with his disciples, teaching them. And it's at that point that we get to this Great Commission. There is so much in this Great Commission that we're going to split it off into five pieces. Five pieces. And the first piece that we're going to look at is the very first thing that Jesus says. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. What is that? All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Well, if you want to ask the question of authority... This is really not that, that big of a concept. Jesus is God, right? Just like we were talking about with the children. Jesus is God. He has all authority. Plain and simple, right? He has all authority. So if we look into the Old Testament, God has all authority. He, 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 he asks nothing less than that we consider that he has, has all authority. The first commandment is, you shall have no other gods. That means there is no other God, no other entity, no other force on earth that we are to consider to have more authority than God. Period. Okay. In our Old Testament lesson, we see God who says to Moses, I've, I've got my people over here and they're, they're in a heap of trouble and I have chosen you. And I'm going to send you and you're going to... Uh, and you're going to speak in my name and to, to, everybody, to, the, to the people and to, and to Pharaoh. And Moses is like, wait a second. He's not going to listen to me. And God is like, yes, he is. Because I am who I am. And he'll listen. Because it's not Moses who was going and doing this. It is God who was doing it through Moses. The prophets were the same way, right? The prophets didn't speak with their own words. 
But they were given the words by God to say. They would say, thus says the Lord, and then would come whatever God had spoken. And, and the prophets would say, this is, these are God's words coming out of my mouth, not my words coming out of my mouth. It was the authority of God that the people were to listen to, not the authority of the prophets. And we would even see this with Jesus. We see it in, the, in, the other, in, in many of the other Gospels where, uh, where, where Jesus is teaching in, you know, among, among the people. And the people would come and they would listen. They would say, this person teaches with such authority. We just have to listen. So I don't think it's a surprise to us, right? That Jesus comes, he's at the top of the mountain, and he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Yes, he is God, he has all authority. Here's the problem. There's a one, one little word in there that, that trips me up. Given. We believe that Jesus has been God from all eternity, right? So, how is he given authority? Doesn't he already have it? Doesn't he have all authority already? How can, how can Jesus be given an authority that he doesn't already have. What's changed? What's different now than before? This kind of takes us back into Matthew again and look into it and say, okay, well, what's, what's happened? I mean, he's had all of this authority to teach and to preach and to heal and to drive out demons. But the one authority that he has at this point in the scriptures that he didn't at that point is to forgive the sins of the world on the basis of his own sacrifice. You see, up to that point, if you wanted to have the forgiveness of your sins, you needed to provide a sacrifice. Blood had to be shed for your sins. But now, Jesus has provided himself as the sacrifice. He is the one whose blood has been shed for the forgiveness of the sins of the entire world. And more than that, he rose from the dead three days later to show us that not only will we have the forgiveness of our sins, but we will live with him for an eternity. He has power over sin. He has power over death. So when Jesus is standing at the top of the mountain and he tells his disciples that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him, he's talking about the fact that forgiveness of sins is now available to all of mankind through him. He has accomplished it. It is finished. It's happened. And now this authority has been, is, is placed upon this mountain and it's, it's there for the disciples to see. This is awesome. This is an awesome authority that Jesus has. My, my next question, though, is, is this news for the disciples at this point? I mean, Jesus has spent 40 days with his disciples, right? After his resurrection. He's been teaching them. It, it, did Jesus, like, hold off with the information about his new authority until the very end is kind of like a big boom before he, he's off into heaven? I don't think so. I think this is probably one of the first things he says, right? I've come to fulfill everything that's been told of me in the, in the Old Testament. Therefore, take a look at my cross. Take a look at the empty tomb. Look at what this means for, for you and for all of mankind. I think that comes right away. I don't think he's saving it till the end to let him know that he has this new authority to forgive sins. So, why is he telling them this? Why did he choose at this moment to tell them that, that now I have authority given to me to do these things? I think it has everything to do with what he says next. The very next thing that he says to the disciples essentially is this. He says, as you go from this place, and as you continue to go throughout your life, you are going to do as I have been doing. You are going to make disciples for me. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to communicate this truth about my authority to forgive sins through my death and resurrection. And as the Holy Spirit works, you're going to be baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So they know that they have been saved 
and forgiven through this washing and rebirth. And then you're going to teach them all of these things that you've heard me say. And don't worry. Don't worry. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. You see what Jesus is doing is he's authorizing his disciples. He is authorizing his disciples to be his ambassadors in the world. That's an awesome concept, isn't it? To take the authority that is his to forgive sins, right? To, to show that they have the forgiveness of sins through his blood. To take that authority and to be the ones to use that authority in the world. And the coolest thing is they have everything they need to do it. Everything. They have the message of forgiveness of sins, right? They've experienced it. They've seen it. They've heard it from him. They know that, that, that forgiveness of sins is there for the world. They can explain that to people. They've heard Jesus teach. For three years, they've heard him speak about what it looks like to be a part of this kingdom. But I think the most important thing of all is that they're authorized to do it. They're not going to speak as, as people who are saying, well, you know, let me tell, me tell you about Jesus and all of my ideas about him. You know, it's not going to be that way. They are coming and saying, here is what my teacher has said. Here is what my teacher has done. These words aren't mine. They're coming from God himself, and they are for you. They can speak with authority because they have been authorized by Jesus himself to do that. Now, when I talk to Christians about this authority that Jesus gives to his disciples, often it is met with some apprehension. You know, there's, there's a feeling of inadequacy. Like, you know, I, I, I can't really do this. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's, that's for me. Pastor, I really would like it if you were to do this for me. You're the one who's trained. You're the one who has all of the, you know, all of this theological training. And I, and I, I'm sorry. I, I look at that and I just don't. I don't. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I mean, I look at these disciples and they are ordinary people. Yes, they've had an extraordinary experience, but they really are ordinary people from all walks of life who have been authorized by Jesus to be His ambassadors, to do as He had been doing. To represent him. And it, and it doesn't take exceptional things to do that. You see, for these disciples, it was just a part of who they were. It wasn't, it wasn't something where, where they flip on their, their Jesus ambassadorship and then flip it off for the rest of their life. This was just a part of who they were. Every day, they were representing Jesus in the words that they said, in the actions that they took, the choices that they made. All of that was to represent Jesus and speak in his name to the people that were around them. It was a full-bodied experience that everything they did, in one way or another, represented Jesus and the kingdom that they belonged to. But I think one of the most challenging things about this is to really look at what these disciples did with their authority. What these disciples did with their authority. They, they went out into the world. And in a world where, where they could suffer persecution for speaking these things, they spoke it anyway. And Christian tradition tells us that all but one of those disciples there that day met death because of what they spoke, because of their ambassadorship. That is an awesome commitment to the authority that they've been given. And it makes us reflect upon ourselves a little bit. Because the fact of the matter is, we have been given that very same authority. We are the disciples of Jesus in our world. We have Jesus speaking his authority through us. And what do we do with it? We go to church. We go to church. Now, no, don't get me wrong. 
I love our gatherings every Sunday morning. Okay, don't, I do. I think it's an integral part of, of the rhythm of Christianity that we, that we gather together, that we have this day of rest in Him. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If Christianity is a Sunday morning thing, it's not, it's not even close to what these disciples experienced. It's not. The fact of the matter is, this, this is our resting time. This is the time where we come together and, and, we, and we take that great big deep breath. We, we sigh for a moment and, and we, we talk with the brothers and sisters in Christ about what it's like to be his ambassador. And we don't have to, we don't have to work so hard. We can, we can simply love God for a moment and, and not have to worry about what people around us are, 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 are seeing or, 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 or perceiving from us. We can, we can just let out some of the concerns that we have to one another because everybody around here knows what it's like to be an ambassador of Jesus. We're doing it every day. But I think one of the challenges that we have is to do it every day, right? That we don't flip on the switch in one moment and flip it off the next. That every single day, in every moment of every day, we are the ambassador of Jesus. We are representing him. We speak in his name. And everything that, that we do, everything that we say, and the way we carry ourselves, the choices that we make. Why? To make disciples. Why? Because there are people who don't know what it means to have their sins washed away in baptism. Why? Because there are people who, who make choices in this world that go completely against the way God made this world to function and are suffering because of it. I think God authorizes us not only to have something to do, but to have a heart for people who don't believe. I think sometimes we just let the people go by and, and, and we, don't let, we don't let it get into our hearts what's going on with that person. We don't let it really sink in that without the forgiveness of sins that Jesus gives to people, there is no forgiveness. There is no eternity. There is no new earth. There is no eternity with God. I think sometimes we just scale over our hearts so we don't feel it. Because if we don't feel it, then, then we can just go on our merry way. God authorizes us to speak in His name. And to truly do it, to truly do it, I think we have to have a heart for people who don't believe. And, I'll, and you know what, you're going you're gonna to hear all of these truths right here on Sunday morning. And I wish... I wish unbelievers were beating down our doors to get in here today, but it doesn't happen that way. It just doesn't. I'm sorry. The only way people find their way into this place on a Sunday morning is if the ambassadors of God have reached them first. And that's you and me. And that's on the other six days. So I, I don't mean to be a downer because actually this is a really awesome life to live. This is an exciting thing to do. I, I, it is a, gives us a purpose for life that's so far above and beyond the mundane things that this world has to offer. Because we're on a mission with God to do this. We have been authorized by the God Almighty to live this way and to do these things. And we have the forgiveness of sins. We don't have to worry about ourselves. We've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus already. So we have freedom. We don't have to worry about our own salvation. We can get out there with the name of Jesus and be concerned about other people's salvation. I want to offer one other thing to you. Each other. I know this is hard. Trust me, I've got people that I'm I'm praying for and working with and talking to every day, people who don't believe in Jesus, and, and, and many of them still don't believe. And it breaks my heart, but I, I'm still going for it. Now I tell you, it's really helpful when I can talk about that with somebody else. When I can talk about that and say, all right, here's, here's what my, my last conversation was like. 
ah, uh, you know, <laughs> this is really frustrating. Do you do that? Do you talk to other people about sharing Jesus with other people? Do you actually talk about what it's like to live this out on a daily basis? Because if you don't, you're, you're missing something. That's part of what it means to be the fellowship, to be the body of Christ, to work together and to, and to share these things with each other. That's why we have God speak groups, by the way. Those groups are designed so that we can sit down and talk about what it means to be a believer and spend time in God's word and to pray for each other. And I really hope that, that each and every one of you would find a group that works for you or if there isn't a group, we'll make one. All right, we'll form one so that you can get together with other Christians and, and see what it really is like to have that kind of fellowship with one another as we are the ambassadors for Jesus out in the world. It is a powerful, powerful thing. And maybe nothing, none of that's going to work for you. Fine. I love coffee and I love to sit down with my other fellow believers and talk about these things. Like and said, we'll meet at a coffee shop. I'm serious. We'll talk about it. And, and for that matter, I, I, I know I know there are other people in our elders and, and Jordan and Pastor Pavana and all of these others who would love to sit down with you and talk about what it means to be a believer and go through some of those challenges in, in, in that and, and what it means to speak with the authority of God into people's lives. I'll do it. I'm happy to. In the end, we're doing this all together, right? Today we rest in Christ. Tomorrow we're back to work. Loving people, communicating the truth, because God has authorized us to do it.